So, hi, Luigi. Uh, good to speak with you. Hope you had a, a good holiday uh, yesterday. Uh, I'm curious, uh, you know, now that you've had a few days, what your retrospective is on the, the Classico. Um, you know, where it ranks in, in terms of the rivalry games you've played. Um, what were parts of it that you enjoyed? What were parts of it that were challenging? Uh, and, you know, whether you prefer Levi's or Stanford as, as a venue. <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, it, it was a great uh, moment to be a part of that game. For me personally, uh, having seen the league start as a player in college in the, in the late 90s, being a part of the early, early stages of the league myself as a player and now as a coach today and seeing how far it's come um, and how far it's developed and the new markets and cities and fan bases, the academy's growing. And then, so to be a part of that game for me personally is, is a big honor and I'm really proud. It was really exciting. I want to thank the fans uh, that, and all the supporters that came out because we felt their support and energy and the place was buzzing. And, and uh, look, you saw my celebration or if you didn't maybe go, I mean, I, I celebrated the, that second goal um, in a very uh, maybe emotional way or passionate way because because uh, you know this is my home this is my club this, these are my fans and I feel really connected to them and I'm I'm proud to be uh, the coach for San Jose and, and represent us in the Classico as the coach so um, you know our boys fought back I loved our response I thought we were improved I thought we improved a lot in our XG and our creation and our pressing um, you know, so that was uh, the positive, and, and we responded, and, and like I said, came back, and we felt the energy of the fans pushing us, and, and I'm so thankful we gave them that goal uh, to tie it. Now, you know, we had to respond. We've had to respond the last several games. You know, we've, we would like to take the next step of uh, scoring the first goal, you know, and having more and imposing more in uh, getting the lead earlier or first, and I think that's the next objective. That's something we want to grow and take the next step in is take initiative from the beginning more rather than have to res always respond. I love that we were, are always ready to respond. That is that is the sign of a good team, a mentally a team that mentally can react and be strong. Uh, but I also know that these games, uh, you know, can have an effect. The final effect can be dictated by who scores first. And it's something that I, th I think we have the opportunity to improve. And then Levi's versus Stanford. They both were special in, in different ways. I would have loved to win the game in Stanford, so I could claim that it's a, a similar feeling. Um, they were both special. You know, they were both special. Um, I can't say one better than the other. You know, maybe Levi's field condition was a little bit better because uh, there wasn't a commencement speech on it the week before. Uh, and dimensions were similar. Pretty narrow, both fields, but we, we can play in a narrow field. We, we can play with verticality, and I think pressing can be effective on narrow fields. So, like, I'm not worried about that. Um, but both, both were buzzing. Uh, we we appreciate both, and would like to continue them for sure. Let's take a second question from Jamin Moore. Hi, Luigi. Uh, good to talk to you today. Hope you had a good fourth. Um, I didn't get to talk to you after the game, so I want to reflect a little bit back on, on the tactics of the game. Uh, it looked like uh, that things were a little bit more of a, either a 4-2-3-1 or a, maybe a 4-3-3 with, with more of a 6 and 8 and a 10 rather than the double 8s I've been featuring most season long. Um, it seemed like it added more punch in the attack. Obviously, you, you, you flipped your wingers at various times. You push, push forward people into the left half space that Montero often is in. You know, just you, can you talk a bit more about kind of those tactics and what do you think it brought and, and what do you think maybe it, it lacked in terms of defensive solidity and, and uh, what does that bode for the way that you, you may play going forward if fans are uh, interested in trying to understand the, the way you want to play? Thanks. Yeah, look, the, the, the principles we work with are we want to break lines. We want to, we want to attract and break lines and we want to break the last line and we want to attack the box uh, with numbers. Uh, and I felt like whatever formation we put out there, it's important that the, that the principles are most important. You know, possession is going to be important. We want to have sequences of passes, but it's, 
it's the most important is that we have a structure and how we want to build, break lines, and and attack the box. And I'm I'm happy with. Uh, I thought we did that pretty well. We we need to do it even better, um, even in a in a difficult environment like LAFC, uh, where we we need to show that we're capable of attacking them, and stressing their back line. So the verticality piece that's something we want to keep improving and working on. Um, <clears throat> And then the way, you know, formation-wise, you mentioned some ideas there. Yeah, look, in the build-up, we have, you know, we try to be consistent with a 4-2-3-2 two, two in build-up and vary those in different ways, depending on the opponent, um, giving us uh, numbers to connect. And, and uh, But if we lose the ball, have a press after loss and a connection defensively right after we, if we lose the ball. And then we need runs in behind. We need runs, even if we're going to play between the lines, we still need runs in behind to Back, drop the back line and and give us spaces either to expose in behind or between the lines. So I thought we 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 should we improved in that. Nico what is in this kind of free role that Mito usually has and Mito you know had a good game against St. Louis. He's been injured and uh, it's it's tough to miss him. But I thought Nico stepped in and did a, a very noble uh, job for us to to bring to make the game uh, forward to play forward. So yeah, look and. Build up, you can call it a 4-2-3-1 with Mito between the lines and the wingers varying their widths and heights. And then defensively, I think we were pretty clear in our 4-4-2 defensively, but picking moments where other players had to release if our two, you know, if Nico and Jabo couldn't get pressure on the ball. So that is one of our ways of a mid to be in a mid-block to high press. It doesn't mean we're going to do that the next game. It doesn't mean we're going to do it. Um, often it's just it's just what where we are today and what we did last. So, but I I like that we have versatility in how we can get into a mid block to high press shape. Um, and I think I I love that we're showing different ways that we can do it based on where we are and our personnel and the and the opponent. So, uh, but we do want to build pressure on the ball. I thought we created some really good attacks, building pressure, winning it, playing forward immediately. Um, so that's another part of our principle, our defensive principles that. We want to show our fans, we want to show our family, we want to show each other, no, no matter the formation. We'll take our next question from Fabian Rankel. Hey, Lucci, thanks for taking a question today. I want to talk a little bit about Jackson Mule's call up to the Gold Cup roster. What do you think of that? And then having coached you know, Jesus Ferreira and seeing him blossom in this Gold Cup, maybe I want to know kind of a little bit of your thoughts on that. Thank you. Yeah, look, good for you know, good for Jackson, uh, for him to get the call up. I know it's unfortunate for injuries in camp, because um, you know, but he was on the preliminary list. He's been recognized and working well this season, uh, on and off the field, uh, and we're we're very proud of him. And he had a really good game against uh, the Galaxy in this last game. So I'm not surprised if he's the next man up and for U.S. Soccer in the, in the Gold Cup, and and uh, we're going to support him and if. And if he's getting that opportunity, it's a reflection of the team working well as well collectively to earn that opportunity. We want all of our players to earn these opportunities in the national team. It means we're working well, and they are, and they have their part in that uh, in our club. Um, <clears throat> and then, so regarding um, Jesus, right? Like Jesus, yeah. Look, I know the family really well. Uh, I've known him since he was uh, in the youth. 11s you know u12s and coming through the academy um being with him as he as he uh progressed as a first team player had the, the world cup experience and now seeing him uh, do well in the gold cup just really proud of him you know and not surprised you know he has this ability to play between lines run in behind be effective in the box uh like like a center forward attacking mid he's versatile or two forwards so um proud of him he's working hard and uh you know, when he's representing our country, um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely se certainly always going to be rooting for U.S. soccer. And the only moment that uh, that it's it's OK if he doesn't have his best night is when uh, San Jose plays FC Dallas, you know, because uh, because he's a, he's a very dangerous player. But but no supporting him and proud of him and wishing him the best now with U.S. in the Gold Cup. Let's take a question from Robert Jonas. Thanks, Ryan, and, and thank you, Lucy, for the time this afternoon. I want to follow up with the, uh, the question about Jackson. Um, you've obviously had a, you know experience uh, seeing Jackson play when you were part of the coaching staff in U.S. soccer and understanding you know, the, the role that he could play. 
Yeah, what you know, what is it about his game that you think really does suit the national team well, specifically as they enter this knockout round? And then I'll ask a follow up after that, but I'm willing to kind of get your thoughts on you know, how you see Jackson fitting into the national team first. Yeah, look, when BJ called the other day, it was very simple. It's like, hey, um, we want to call on Jackson. We've got injuries in the midfield. We think he's showing uh, he can step in and play. We can't guarantee start or not, but he's the guy that we think can can fit in what how we're playing uh, and trying to break lines, play forward, push the game forward, and work defensively in, in the in the pressing triggers and in, in organization. So to, just to kind of hear that they, they're working in a way that's similar with us or what they're seeing in Jackson uh, on tape uh, and to come in and try to do a similar job is, is pretty cool. Um, and that's credit to the team and credit to Jackson to earn the opportunity. So, you know, we'll, we're going to miss him. You know, we got, we've got two uh, very challenging games before there's a little mini break in, uh, in LAFC uh, away in Seattle here at home. So, like, you know, um, not, not ideal to lose him in these, in these challenging moments, but happy to, have, happy to see other guys step up uh, when their name's called. You know, looking at Jack Scaham come into a very high-pressure game and um, but he's been working hard the last few weeks and earning his opportunities and then come in and start this last game, score, play well, press. You know, his press led to the goal against St. Louis, right, in, in, the, in the offensive transition. So um, that that's what we're going to expect of the team for, for other guys to do. We're going to be missing Jackson, and, and that's exciting for me. And, and related to that, uh, you, that was going to be part of my follow-up. You know, Jackson was going to miss this next game regardless because of yellow card accumulation. You mentioned earlier that uh, Miro was uh, was injured and that was part of the reason he was unavailable for the Galaxy. I was hoping you could comment on his status and, and where you see him potentially with these next two games coming in close succession. And you know, if uh, Miro is not able to step up, uh, how Nico Shakiris is going to potentially be leaned on a little bit more in these games. Yeah. Um... So, look, with, with Jackson, yeah, he, ser- he was going to serve suspension. Suspension gets pushed based on rules, MLS rules and, and suspensions and na- national team call-ups. So it, it'll depend uh, how far U.S. goes in the tournament to see how a suspension would get pushed. Um, you know, so, so that's that. And then Mito, yeah, look, Mito uh, partook in parts of training today, so that's positive. Um, is, is he going to be available full for us in the game? We're not sure yet. We're going to have to see what tomorrow and Friday look like. Nico, um, like I said earlier, we thought he, he did a really positive job for the team. Um, last game in the midfield, more in the attacking sense, um, and, and worked hard defensively. And then you have players like, you know, Baldissimo is getting back in, in our training. Uh, we're not sure if he's going to be cleared yet. Judson, similar. He's nursing uh, something that, that is just not allowed him to be uh, 100% uh, in the last few days, but he could very well be ready to go. Um, so it, it is looking positive, and he he got through all 11s today, 11 versus 11 today. So Judson's also another name that we got to consider. So there's a few uh, pieces there. Tommy Thompson, Jack Scaham can play in the midfield. So um, you know Miguel uh, Tralco has the versatility in the last line, uh, back line. Um, uh, Paul Marie has done that as well in inner squads. Uh, We'll see. We'll see what the what the options may look like uh, for the game, but um, you know uh, we, we want to try to find the, the the benefit in it, the positive, the versatility in it, um, and no excuses. But we, ha- we we need to be ready to show our best team, no matter who's available or not, Saturday. We'll take one final question, a follow from Alex Morgan. Hey, Lucci, I, I got one more for you. Um, now that it's July fifth, silly season. Uh, is officially open. I'm going to have to warn you, there might be a few questions about transfers and, and potential signings over the course of the, of the next few weeks. So, so you've, you've been warned. My, my question today is, um, you know, whether you think it's possible to sign someone and bring them into the lineup um, before leagues come, or if that's just too short a time frame, if, you know, fans should, you know, cross that off their minds and be thinking, okay, Maybe the club brings someone in over the next few weeks and months, and then realistically, it's after a week's cup that they can get in. Yeah, look, that's we're analyzing that as we speak. We have been for the last few weeks, um, because of the window. Um, uh, I would say we're analyzing that. Um, 
It's possible. Your question is, is it possible? Yes, it's possible. Um, and so we're analyzing that. I, I, I would just only add Leagues Cup, not sure timing-wise if that's something that is possible before uh, or after Leagues Cup would start. Okay, so, so possible but not likely is, is kind of where we are. Uh, I wouldn't say likely or not likely. I have to stay neutral on that. <laughs> okay, I'll follow up with you next but, week. But definitely, poss definitely possible. Look, uh, we have to be analyzing that. We, we, we must. If we're not, we're not doing our job right if we're not considering those things. We've had uh, suspensions, uh, call national team call-ups. We've had injuries. We have to analyze those things of how can the team get better. Um, we will get guys back soon, obviously from the Gold Cup and, and that. And, and, you know, we, we want to be full force as much as possible. But there's going to be challenges even in the rest of the season. And, um, but there's solutions in the team and there could be – Solutions out, outside the team. That so, so it is possible. We're analyzing it. Um, likeliness, uh, that's very neutral right now. Um, but you know, don't don't be surprised either way.